Okay, so there is a question. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> I just uh, made a small recap of uh, what we did uh, yesterday. So we are considering this uh, simple model in uh, n dimension. <clears throat> so uh, with, uh, with vector uh, living in Rn, lambda is a signal to noise ratio. Uh, we are in a base optimal setting so the statistician knows the parameter on the model. Uh, I introduce a, a partition function, the Hamiltonian, uh, on this uh, free energy uh, F, which is a log partition function some, uh, sometimes. So this is a definition and uh, this is uh, what uh, we need to prove in order to connect the free energy to the mutual information. The mutual information is a quantity that uh, you also saw yesterday in the course of, uh, of Laurent. Uh, so, so I guess I will start with, uh, with uh, the proof of uh, this and then we will uh, go on uh, <coughs> and see how we make progress. So the mutual information is a kullback Leiber divergent between uh, the distribution of the couple and the product of the marginals. Okay, so you need to, to look at uh, the, row, the Radon Nicodim, if you want, flow of this. So it measures how far you are from an uh, independent uh, sample uh, for the couple. And this, uh, in your case, we can write it explicitly. <coughs> And you have to normalize it. Okay, so this term is coming from marginalizing for the wire probability. <coughs> so this is a simple definition. And now another definition the mutual information is just expected of the log of this ratio. Okay, so I need to take the log on uh, the expectation in order to compute uh, my quantity. So let's do that. So this is minus the expectation of log Root of lambda x transpose y <coughs> uh, minus let's write it uh, like this. So there are small x and big x. I hope it's clear. So if it's not, that, uh, let me know. X. So I, I basically I did put this exponent here and there is a minus in front taking the log. So I didn't do too much uh, right now. <coughs> um, so in this term, what I have, so I want to, uh, to connect this to uh, the free energy, uh, which is a log of uh, this quantity. So here you, you recognize that there are some terms uh, coming from uh, this quantity, namely, I mean, okay, this one are over there and uh, there. So this is equal to minus F of lambda plus the remaining term. <coughs> There is a square root of lambda uh, x transpose y. 
minus lambda divided by two, this last term. Okay, so we are almost uh, there. Uh, it looks like we we have it wrong, okay, and because we have uh, this additional term uh, sign which is uh, not correct. So now uh, you can replace this y by its expression here. You see that you will have a, a lambda, a square root of lambda <coughs> x transpose x appearing. So this is the norm of x. So it will cancel with this one. So it will give a plus lambda over two. And then the other term is uh, the scalar product of x on z. Since z is a Gaussian random variable centered, it will be zero. Okay. So this is. <coughs> So to go from this line to this line, I'm just replacing y uh, with this quantity. Okay, so and this, this is exactly what uh, what I claimed here. Okay, so uh, <coughs> if you are doing uh, <coughs> statistical physics, you care about this. If you are doing information theory, you, are, you care more about this quantity, but uh, they are basically the same. Yeah. Now, uh, you have a very nice, so, which time in 2000, uh, nice property of this function. <clears throat> So I did the, the MMSC for this, I hope it's clear. So this is what I, uh, I defined uh, yesterday. So as a function of the signal to noise ratio lambda, so uh, is non-increasing, <coughs> which seems kind of uh, continuous over R plus. You also have that the mean square error at zero. Well, this is um, zero when lambda tends to infinity. So the, this is, uh, I mean, Lambda is called the signal to noise ratio. So you hope that uh, when you are increasing the signal, you will reduce uh, the, the error uh, and it will vanish uh, in the limit uh, where you have a, a, a big signal. Uh, <coughs> I, the, the proof, uh, well, I, I will do the proof for the, for the part which is uh, non-increasing because I think it's, uh, it's, it's quite nice. Uh, so I will only prove uh, this part uh, over there. So what I'm I'm taking two <coughs> uh, parameters, and I want to order the MMSC for uh, lambda one and lambda two. <coughs> so I'm defining the inverse of this, uh, and now two model. So it's simpler to write it like that, I think. So which are exactly the, the one I'm considering. I'm just scaling everything by the um, uh, square root of lambda. But there is a small. So this is <coughs> exactly the same value of this. This, this. this x are the same. This z1 are the same. And here I'm adding what you expect. Okay, so you, I have two channels. The first one is exact, exactly the channel corresponding to a signal to noise lambda one. The second one is exactly a channel corresponding to the signal to noise lambda two, but they are coupled. Okay, so they are not independent. So, I mean, 
well, uh, uh, x has the low uh, p of x, uh, z1 and z2 are iid uh, Gaussian and are independent of x. So now what you can write is, so this is the MMSC for this channel. I'm just writing, so this is a definition, nothing here. Now, uh, Z2 is independent of the couple X and Z1. So I can add the conditioning here, it will not change. Here, I'm adding Z2. And this is still uh, correct. Now, if you are giving me uh, y1 on z2, this is the same thing as giving me y1 on y2. Okay, so here you can replace the conditioning. So, this I will write. Okay, and now this is lower than uh, this quantity. I'm removing the conditioning, so I'm here. I'm projecting on a, a bigger space, so uh, when I'm shrinking the space, uh, the projection will, will be will be looser. And this is exactly the MMSC at lambda two. Okay, so now I will uh, try to convince you of another theorem due uh, also to Verdoux and co author, which is called in the literature the IMMSC theorem. <coughs> so, which connect the uh, which connect uh, the mutual information with uh, minimum mean square error. So, this is due to uh, well, the way it's stated to Guo, Shamai, and Verdu in 2005, it turns out that uh, this uh, uh, theorem was known in, uh, in, in statistics, and it was uh, due to, uh, it's called uh, De Bruggin Identity in, uh, in a statistical paper. Uh, I think it's, it was published in the, in the 50s, but it was rediscovered, uh, <coughs> I guess important results are then to be rediscovered by, uh, by Verdu uh, later. So uh, the claim is the following. If you consider the derivative of uh, the mutual information, okay, uh, this quantity, with respect to lambda, this is equal to one half times the minimum mean square error of lambda. So yesterday, I think in my first talk, I made the, I forgot the one half, and Jean got it right. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, okay, uh, what do you mean by, uh, so, so we, uh, I'm not sure to understand your question. I, I mean, uh, what I'm doing here, I, I prove it only for my model. So I mean, uh, this proof, uh, I'm using uh, the, the MMSC. So each time I'm writing MMSC of Lambda, this is, uh, this, is this quantity for this model, but, Yes, so the, in the paper I'm citing, uh, you have a more general uh, 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 statement. So, uh, but for the purpose of this course, I'm, I'm just narrowing down to. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you for, for, for the clarification. On, on this, this, I mean, this paper also, you, you can prove it. Actually, we will prove it for uh, more general models, but yeah, the, 
Does it answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Is there missing what? Uh, uh, is there missing what? No, no, no. It's because, yeah, it's already, I mean, uh, this is a uh, radon economy. So it's, uh, so, so here there is no, I mean, I, I'm not sure I understand the, I mean, if you prefer, you, you can write uh, this part uh, on the right here. But this is this is a ratio of two densities. So this is a number, basically. That's what uh, I want to say. It's not a measure on the right. This is a ratio of two densities, and okay. yeah, yes. Uh, so in this is the same interaction. Uh, we don't have the Russian noise in the calculation. Well, so if we do not have a Gaussian noise, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Ah, no, uh, I mean, for, for the free energy, uh, this uh, connection. And you remove that the noise is Gaussian. Yes. So you take the same linear. Uh, uh, okay. 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 So the the, the, the easy uh, the answer to your question is no. Uh, because I'm, I'm when I'm writing this, I'm heavily uh, using the, the assumption that everything is Gaussian. So, uh, but what you can uh, try to do is, uh, what people do is, you, you prove first your result for Gaussian noise, and then you show universality result, showing that <coughs> uh, your results are still uh, correct if you replace Gaussian by I don't know sub Gaussian. Uh, I mean, but. I uh, guess, well, I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, if you remove everything in my assumption, then. Uh, <laughs> but, well, uh, you, but, ask, you ask whether we can remove the fact that the noise is Gaussian and still link free energy and mutual information, for example, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, what, no. uh, what does it change? I guess uh, the, 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 right, the moment of our Yeah, yeah. Right. You you can uh, completely relax that the the noise is Gaussian. You can take uh, y, which is the data being the uh, the random variable drawn from essentially any conditional distribution of x. Okay. So you don't need Gaussian at all, and you can. But, but then you 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 will not get. Uh, you will get something more complicated. Yeah. Okay. But you can still relate the mutual information and the free energy, but you will lose also this relation. Then to access the MMAC and things like this is much more complicated. Yes, yeah, this, uh, well, all the proof I know I wrote are with Gaussian noise, I think. I, I think it's even in the title of the paper. Uh, so, and what we will see today is uh, actually. Uh, 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 we will use a, a lot of uh, like integration by part for Gaussian on non variables, which will be crucial to do uh, some derivation. Uh, and yeah, so uh, the, the, the assumption that the noise is Gaussian is uh, will be crucial for the computation, but uh, then you, you can try to show some universality result uh, if, you, if you care about this. Uh, the <coughs> One remark is that this kind of universality approaches are valid specifically in that model. So you can map any type of noise, you can replace it by an equivalent Gaussian noise, right? Okay, yeah. But in other problems like regression, for example, you cannot do that. You really have to solve the problem 
with the non-Gaussian noise and it won't give something equivalent to a problem, yeah, a yes. regression task with Gaussian noise. So I mean, uh, the univers universality result is not for free. So you, you have to work. Uh, in a, but for, for all my talk, uh, I will uh, heavily rely on, uh, com on computation done for, with Gaussian noise. So, uh, uh, so the derivative of the, uh, so this is uh, the main theorem and the other part, which I want to show is this. So, okay. So remember the bracket notation is uh, when you are taking uh, the expectation with respect to the conditional uh, um, uh, distribution knowing uh, Y, big Y. Okay, so uh, why it's uh, important, uh, as you will see, is uh, <coughs> basically uh, what we care about is this quantity, the minimum mean square error, so the best uh, performance you can achieve, uh, whatever algorithm you are using. And uh, you see that it's related to the derivative of uh, <coughs> the free energy. So uh, the technique of proof uh, that we will uh, use will be to try to get a good estimate of this uh, f of lambda, and then uh, take the derivative of it in order to, to get the result we are, we are interested in. Okay, this is uh, the, 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 the way we will go. Uh, so, and I mean, uh, as a result, uh, you since uh, the MMSC is uh, non-increasing, uh, it implies that uh, f is convex, differentiable, uh, non-decreasing, and even Lipschitz with a parameter. is a directly from, from here. <clears throat> okay, so we'll try to prove at least part of this and we'll need a, another important tool. Uh, so this time, which has nothing to do with Gaussian actually. Uh, the which is called Nishimori identity. Uh, the, 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 it's called like that uh, in, in this community, and uh, this is simply a base rule. Okay, but still, I think it's important to give a name to this property because uh, it, it's uh, quite it's more a notation if you want than a, a, a real. Uh, uh, mathematical statement. So <clears throat> it's very general. So here you, you take any uh, couple of uh, random uh, uh, variable with a uh, corresponding expectation E. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is a notation I will use. Uh, uh, that are kind of standard are uh, IID samples. <coughs> so given Y with distribution the posterior of X given Y. So the way you sample, you, you first draw your uh, X on Y. Okay. You have your uh, Y, and now you, <coughs> you take IID samples. With a posterior distribution, with a y you you, you just sample at the beginning. <coughs> uh, so on independent of random variable. So in particular, independent of x. Now you denote with a bracket.
the expectation with respect to this measure. Uh, then you have for any function uh, measurable and so on. Okay, so here you have kind of uh, replicas uh, of your original X. And what you can do is replace any one of them by the, the original val values you sample at the beginning. And here I'm taking uh, both average with respect first to the conditional law and then uh, to the total uh, the E, which is the initial law of uh, my couple X on Y. So is it clear that uh, this is a, a, an obvious uh, statement? So <clears throat> basically, if you if you uh, if you want uh, to sample uh, th this uh, quantity, the first thing you do well, th this one is easier. Uh, you you first sample x and y, okay. And then, uh, given y, you sample these k minus one replicas. Uh, here, what you do, you first sample x and y, you throw x, and then you sample uh, k replica according to, to this law. But uh, okay, now uh, in order to uh, to sample this law, what I, I can do is uh, first sample x, uh, x and y, uh, throw x, and resample it. Uh, according to this distribution, and you will get exactly the same law. So the law of this uh, random variable and this random variable are exactly the same. Okay, this is basic, well, what we call Bayes rule. So it might be uh, weird to uh, <coughs> to put an end of uh, on such a simple uh, uh, identity, but uh, we will use uh, it uh, over and over. Uh, uh, in the in the proof, so it's quite convenient and indeed, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, you need to get used to the notation more. That I don't know, though. So, uh, <laughs> that you probably know better than me. Uh, yes, so uh, uh, there is an, so Nishimori uh, is uh, doing statistical physics, uh, but uh, on the physics side, I would say, not on the mass one. And for me, I had the trouble to, to understand uh, when physicists were saying you are on the Nishimori line, uh, what it means or stuff like that. So, uh, as it means essentially a, a temperature in your uh, spin model where you have many simplifications that allow to completely analytically uh, study the model without using non rigorous tools like replicas and things like this. And this special temperature is called the Nishimoi line. And in, in the context of inference, you are always on this special temperature. When you are base optima. When you are, ba yeah. when you are base optima. And this is basically the simplification you can yes. use. Which is called base rule in, in math. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh, uh, okay, so <clears throat> let's start with, uh, we'll use it. Uh, so I, I want to show you a proof of this because it is using uh, a lot of tools that are useful actually. Uh, Let me rewrite it, the minimal mean square error with my uh, bracket notation. Okay, so this is uh, by definition, this is a definition of mean square error. This is a posterior mean of my, uh, of uh, X. Uh, so you, you can rewrite it like this.
vector <coughs> scalar point. Now you have a, a simple property of uh, the posterior mean, which is that this is a projection. Uh, zero. Okay, when I'm, I'm projecting on the I'm projecting, uh, you can see uh, uh, taking the posterior mean as a projection on the, all the measurable function of y. Uh, so it needs to be uh, orthogonal to, uh, to, to my uh, projection. So this implies directly that uh, x transpose x, this quantity is equal to Okay, so this term, you can replace it exactly. This term has exactly the same value of this one. Okay. And now I want to write you see that uh, I'm uh, almost here. Uh, I need to replace uh, <coughs> this term by that one. Okay, so with respect to lambda. So how you go from here to here? It's exactly uh, Nishimori identity. So you, you can, uh, okay, let's start from So by Nishimori, this I can replace it by X1 T it's two. Okay, this is exactly uh, this statement. Uh, now x1 and x2 are independent, so <coughs> yes, so conditionally on this, and which is exactly what I want. Okay, so what we proved is uh, that this, uh, without that, that this line is equal to this line uh, that we can hear. Uh, I erase it, but we also know that uh, we proved this before. Okay, we, ju we just proved uh, that. So if you take the derivative of this, you obtain uh, this term minus the derivative of this. Uh, the, in order to prove uh, this uh, quantity, you need to prove that the derivative of y is equal to this or that the derivative of f3 from lambda is equal to this. Whatever you, you want, you will obtain the result. So let's <coughs> try to prove the result on, on the free energy. So what we want to prove uh, that uh, f of lambda minus f of zero is equal to So let's look at Z of lambda Y. Uh, so uh, the derivative of the, 
So I'm computing basically this quantity here. Uh, the, you can re rewrite it as, so I'm derivating under the integral sum, but it's, it's okay. Uh, X, and then you have the Hamiltonian. So here, uh, the derivative of the log is a derivative divided by uh, the function itself. So the, this is the function itself, and this is uh, the derivative of uh, Z of lambda. Okay. <coughs> so on you see that uh, you can interpret this again, uh, this part here with this, it's uh, exactly the posterior distribution. So what you have is the derivative of uh, the Hamiltonian with respect to the Gibbs distribution. So this is, if you derive it, the Hamiltonian, you have a square root of lambda, which gives you this term. Z plus or two uh, okay. So uh, F of lambda is equal to Z, so this means that f of lambda two minus f of lambda one, uh, you, you take, okay, you can check that you can apply if you need, uh, you can invert the integral on the expectation on this quantity. Uh, x minus, So here I'm integrating over lambda, the parameter of, uh, of my uh, distribution. And now I will use uh, another nice property of Gaussian, namely uh, Gaussian integration by parts, which tell you that if you have a Gaussian on a smooth function, You have always this uh, this uh, relation. So this is due to the specific <coughs> form of the density of Gaussian. And you will apply this quantity to uh, okay. So here I'm considering uh, the scalar. So the component Y of my uh, noise on the component Y of my posterior. So if I'm applying this quantity, uh, this is, uh, uh, the variance is one, so this term will disappear. I hope the notation are clear. I mean, this is taking the derivative with respect to the zi variable in this expression. <coughs> now, remember that this expression is, so I'm marginalizing only with respect to xy. So I'm keeping only the term uh, with xy. So again, now I'm not dealing with vector anymore. Hein? It's uh, it's scalar. So this corresponds to uh, in the Hamiltonian the term uh, involving x i and z i, and you need to renormalize it by. Okay, a normalizing function which is not uh, this one, but the one corresponding to the normalization of this. So this quantity is. <coughs>
Okay. So now I'm taking the derivative of this. Uh, <coughs> so I have a ratio. Uh, you apply the, the, the standard formula. So first you need to take the derivative of this and you will see that there is a term, I mean, the, this term will, uh, will, uh, will come. So there is a square root of lambda xi squared because there is a xi here. And I'm dividing by the i. And the other term is, if you do the mass, the product of uh, this plus the derivative of, times the derivative of this. Uh, and, and you, you, you can, I mean, when you are taking the derivative here, you see that there is a square root of lambda xi coming here. So the square root of lambda is here. And the xi is the same as here. You are taking the product. So this is why you have uh, <coughs> power two uh, over there. Okay, so this severely uh, rely on uh, integration uh, by part because now uh, what I have is that the expectation of zi xi lambda. <coughs> so I'm taking the expectation of everything. Uh, I will do exactly the same trick as before. Uh, Z square with uh, Nishimori, I can replace it. Uh, so square root of lambda by the product of uh, one replique on the original signal. So you obtain x y square minus so from here to here, this is Nishimori. Okay, and we are almost done. <clears throat> so here, uh, what I did uh, compute, so is uh, this quantity. You see that uh, there is uh, this term appearing here on here with a minus. Uh, I'm divided by a square root of lambda. Uh, so in and uh, 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 and this term is uh, disappearing with this one. So in the end, what I get uh, it's f of lambda two minus f of lambda one is equal to so there is a one half coming from here. The integral from lambda one to lambda two of the expected value of which is exactly uh, what I claimed. Well, it's not exactly what I claim here. Uh, if you want to, to get this, you need to uh, show that you have continuity when lambda one goes to zero and then you, you will obtain uh, this result. Uh, I'll skip that. So I guess, uh, what time? Yeah, it's. So uh, <coughs> let me do one last thing. So if you are not familiar with uh, this, uh, the, here you see that the, the, the proof is using uh, several ingredients that are very, uh, that are used over and over uh, uh, in, in, in the computation made on such model. Uh, first, that uh, you can rewrite most of the time the, the derivative of function with respect to the parameter as an expectation with, uh, with respect to the posterior. And then uh, use the trick of the Gaussian integration by part in order to simplify your, your, your formula. So uh, you rely heavily on the fact that the noise is, is Gaussian in order to do uh, your computation uh, explicit. Uh, the Nishimori property has nothing to do with the Gaussian nature of the, of the problem. So I, I will, uh, okay, I will write a small exercise. I, I think it's at least for me, it helps me to, 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 uh, to understand better. Uh, 
So, uh, this exercise is to do uh, explicit computation. Well, this is a very simple model where which is a scalar. I mean, uh, in this case, uh, the, <coughs> on, on, you are assuming that X is Gaussian, the noise is Gaussian. Uh, so in particular, you have Gaussian vector and you can compute everything. So this is uh, uh, what you learn in, uh, I don't know, in any uh, basic book in uh, machine learning uh, or even probability uh, Gaussian vector. So sometimes it's written like, the law of X is, uh, okay, so this is uh, meaning that the mean is zero and the variance is one. <coughs> now this model, uh, I'm rewriting this, so it, which means uh, that uh, this is a Gaussian in Y with mean, which is square root of, <coughs> uh, of lambda uh, times zero. So this is uh, zero, sorry. Well, let's write it. I put it uh, x uh, and uh, with variance one because one is a uh, is uh, the variance of uh, of the noise. Uh, so in particular, what is the law of y in this case? So it's clear to everyone that it will be Gaussian. What is the mean? The mean of y, I mean, on the variance. Thank you. So this, this was the easy part, but now what you can do is compute explicitly the law I'm interested in, which is the law of x knowing y. Okay, I have a Gaussian vector. This, uh, this is a basic calculus. Uh, and in this case, you can check that this is With mean square root of lambda time, uh, divided by one plus lambda times y on variance one. So now uh, with this, you can compute everything. And so uh, the question is uh, compute this, compute this directly. And now check that uh, this is equal to this which is basically Nishimori, and that this, this is Nishimori, but you have a stronger statement. So in the, what, what I'm claiming, I mean, uh, for such a simple model, you don't need to do all the math I did because uh, you can compute everything explicitly. So the, the main point of uh, <coughs> Uh, the IMMAC theorem and so on is uh, try to attack a problem where you do not have explicit uh, formula for, uh, for the, the vector of your law. Uh, shall I stop now or? Yes, okay. <laughs> is there any question perhaps before or in the chat?